Captain on the bridge. Good morning, gentlemen. Carry on. Wait a minute. Can anybody tell me what that piece of land is dead ahead? Uh, sure. Uh, I believe that's the coast of the Soviet Union. Are you out of your minds? We're within 50 miles or less. Do you want to start a fucking war? Hard aboard 260. 260, aye aye, sir. Surface contacts approaching. 310 for 20. All ahead full. Sound general quarters. All ahead full. Aye. Hi, my name is Greg Gale, but you probably know me as Reflected. Let go of the stick, sit back, relax, and let me say a few words before you start her up. First of all, I would like to thank you for purchasing Fear the Bones, my story-driven campaign for the keyboard F14A Tomcat. I hope you'll have as much fun playing it as I had building it. This is an intro tutorial mission that will help you understand the background story and provide context to the campaign. Your name is Lieutenant Commander Martin Brody, call sign Jaws. A Top Gun graduate, you've been flying with VF-84 since 1985. For the last three years, your Rio has been Lieutenant David Pittman, a.k.a. Jester. During this time, the two of you haven't only become an efficient team, but also very good friends. You are aboard the USS Theodore Roosevelt, steaming east on the Black Sea. She was on her way to Athens, for a scheduled port call when the USS Valley Force cruiser had an accident 40 miles off the coast of the Soviet Union. The Big Stick, as the sailors call her, was immediately diverted to the area to provide air cover to the damaged ship. Albeit disappointed for skipping the port call, you and your fellow squadron members are excited about the new mission. Ghost, Pyro, Caveman, Grip, Alvis and Glory are all hoping to meet some Soviet aircraft in the air. By tomorrow morning, the Valley Forge will be in range. Therefore, the captain has ordered all air crew to night call before things may get more serious. Now start her up, taxi to the camp, and launch. I will guide you through this first mission. Jaws, Jester! Hey, how's it going? Saw you guys nailed that three-wire. Hell yeah, we did. What about the others? Elvis and Glory have just launched. Ghost and Pyro are scheduled in 30 mics. They're down in ready room 7 arguing about something stupid as usual. All right, see you guys later. Good luck. We'll be watching you on the plat. Well, with that out of the way, let me introduce y'all, or more I say, welcome y'all to DCS in the F-14A Tomcat and the Fear the Bones campaign, the well, first mission to be exact. 
I know this is a little different from my War Thunder content I've been putting out there, but I enjoy playing DCS, and I wanted to see if y'all would like me to do a playthrough of this campaign. I've played through about six of the missions so far, and I've been enjoying it, so I wanted to come back to the start and record myself playing this and see what y'all thought. If y'all haven't noticed, I am recording this in VR at the moment. Uh, the way I've got my VR recording set up is I've got it trying to meld the two uh, different lenses together, but it tends to favor the right side. So if I'm looking off to the left side here and you can't quite see what I'm talking about, that's just because it likes to favor my right eye and I might not be able to turn far enough to look at it. So with that done, uh, in this mission, we're going to be doing a Case 3 Departure and Recovery, so let's go over what that is, as that is what we will be doing to Nightfall. So, in the knee board here, if I come on over, there's Recovery. Let's start with Departure. So, there are three different cases, and or, well, let me explain. So, a case determines uh, the weather, or it determines what pattern you're going to use to land or depart from a carrier. Case 1 is clear skies, clear weather in the middle of the day, that's what you'll be doing. Case 2 is it's, cl er, it's overcast during the day and there's less visibility. And then case 3 is for when it's storming during the day or like right now where it's nighttime and you have very little visibility. So, with that out of the way, we're going to be doing a Case 3 departure to start off. Uh, we're going to taxi over to Cat 3 right there once we get started up. We're going to take off and fly the uh, ERC, or the carrier's path, just straight out in front of the carrier. By 5 nautical miles, we need to be above 1,500 feet. And at 7 nautical miles, we are going to start hanging a right to intercept the 10 nautical mile DME. And the DME is basically just this uh, circle uh, around the carrier with a 10 nautical mile radius. And so we will fly that using a TACAN system that I'll show off later. But after we get on the DMA, or the DME, we're going to fly around the edge here until we get to about 250 degrees. Then we're going to turn left and fly out to our Marshall stack. And that brings us over to the recovery. So once we get to the Marshall stack and the way you determined where your Marshall stack is, is they will, uh, there is, they will tell you what altitude they want you to hold that. And then you add 15 to that. And that gives you the distance from the carrier you need to be at. So in this mission they're going to tell us to hold at angels 9 or 9,000 feet so we add that to 15 and we get 24 miles so we will be orbiting 24 miles from the ship at 9,000 feet in a six minute left hand racetrack turn so that just means we're turning left in every about six miles ish at, or it'll be about six miles ish if we're doing around 250 knots the goal is to come to this position here by the time the carrier tells us our signal is Charlie that's uh, that's just them telling us you're clear to begin your approach so we'll begin our approach by descending down to 5,000 feet at 400 uh, or at a 4,000 feet per minute descent uh, doing 250 knots once we hit that 5,000 feet, that is called the platform. We will have a call in to the ship letting them know we have reached 5,000 feet. And then we're going to slow our descent to about 2,000 feet per minute until we hit uh, 12,000 feet above, or er, 12,000 feet AGL. No, 1,200 feet AGL. I'm saying that wrong. And we should be at uh, 1,200 feet by 10 nautical miles from the boat. Once we hit 10 nautical miles, we're going to dirty up. That means we're going to drop our gear, deploy our air brakes, drop our flaps, and engage our DLC, basically getting ready to land. And then we're go once all of that's down, we're going to 
apply on speed, which just means we're at the correct AOA at the correct speed for a uh, the correct descent angle to land on the carrier. And we'll have some HUD symbology to help us with that. Uh, and the goal is to be on speed by six nautical miles. Once we hit six nautical miles, we're gonna start descending and we'll be again flying the needles. So uh, there'll be, uh, I'll, I'll show this later on the HUD, but there'll be two lines that'll help us line up on our approach. And those are called the needles. And by three quarters of a mile, that's where we're on final approach. They'll tell us to call the ball and we will fly in and land right in front of us here. At least that is the goal. I am not perfect at any of this, but I do know the procedures for the most part. So I'm going to do my best and hope you all enjoy watching it. Uh, so let's go ahead and get the Tomcat started up. So we're going to come over here into our communications menu, press uh, F8 for our ground crew menu. And we're going to turn on both Change the ground, ground power. power and the ground air supply. Copy. As we Change need both of those to start up the spot. Tomcat. Ground power is now on. Copy. Now that we have power, ground we're going to connected. come over here to the right. Turn on some lights. Then we are going to come over here to the left and engage our pilot oxygen and see that it's down in the bottom left there i might not be able to turn it or twist enough to see that but just giving oxygen to our pilot we're then going to look behind our head and engage the ejection seat once that's done we're going to come into jester's menu hold on let me turn him down because he's going to be loud I wish I could adjust the default volume setting for that. So we're going to tell Jester okay. to start up. Now we ICS are... ICS comm check. Respond to him real quick. Yep, okay. We can hear you. So we're going to come over here to our engine crank and we're going to set it to left. That is going to begin cranking our left engine and we will see it begin to start cranking over here Closing on canopy. Check. our RPM gauge on the left hand side. Once it reaches the third line there, the engine will be primed for startup. Ready to start. So it's there now, so we're going to come over here to our left hand throttle and we're going to uncage that and set it to the idle position. And then you will see the engine start coming alive over here. It'll idle at about 70% RPM there. So while that's going, we're going to turn on our radio and tune it to channel 7, which is the departure frequency. We're then going to uncage our pitch indicator, or our standby ADM. Uh, then we're going to come over here and turn on our radar altimeter and set it to show 500 feet. And that can be warming up. Now, our left engine is on and our engine crank has recentered itself, so we are going to right click on it again, or right click on it this time, and that's going to start up our right hand engine. And we follow the same process. Once it reaches the third line, then we will uncage the throttle. So give that another minute to uncage itself. I'm gonna remove the stick there so I have better view on the HSD. All right, the right engine is ready, so we are now going to uncage the right-hand throttle and let that start up. While it's doing that, we're going to come over here and turn on our pitch, roll, and yaw SAS. Then we are going to power on our VDI, our HUD, and our HSD. We're then going to set the HSD to uh, mirror the Rio's screen in the back. Yaws, we don't have a whole lot of fuel to play with. It should be just enough for a quick lap. That'll let us know when Jester's ready for us to tell him don't to worry, start. Jester, it's only Elvis and Glory up there. We should trap within 30 minutes top. 
to start the ILF or INS alignment. Uh, while we wait on that, we're going to turn down the HUD brightness. I don't like it when there's a lot of artifact red between the lines. It just makes it harder to see. And we can turn down the VDI brightness some too, so that doesn't need to be as bright. So, as we can see now on our HSD, we are seeing the repeated uh, radar information screen from the Rio seat. So, and there we go. Jester should be ready. Yep, he's ready for our INS command. So we're going to tell him to go INS go course. Okay. That is going to align our INS enough for basic navigation. If we want, or so, that'll be this, let me zoom in so it's a little easier to see, this first line right here. Once that carrot reaches that first line, that's good enough for just basic navigation. The middle line right here is enough for minimum weapons. So, with weapons like the Phoenix specifically, you it has a... It needs the Tomcat's INS to be aligned so it can align its own INS. Uh, for its own guidance system. And so that's the min weapons. And then obviously this one line on the far right here is for uh, max or the maximum alignment for our INS. Uh, next thing we're going to do after the beeping stops. That beeping is just letting us know that the radar altimeter has warmed up and is now on. So next we're going to come into the gesture menu again and tell him to tune the TACAN to the Theodore Roosevelt. Then we are going to come over here to our steer point command and tell it to set itself to TACAN. That just means when I swap the HSD back to the compass style display, It'll be in the TACAN mode. Let me turn off the master caution. Uh, next, we're going to turn on our ILS, or instrument landing system. This will show us those needles uh, on the HUD, at least once we're on our landing approach. Get that. Go ahead and get that turned on. Might as well pop on the mirrors. I do, do, do. Ah, ready to taxi. All right, Jester says we're ready to taxi. So next, we're going to turn off the Machine ground, turn off the ground power. power and the ground air supply. Chief, disconnect ground air supply. I'm going to take a. Oh wait, I don't have my water here. Okay, never mind then. The water. Oh, one last thing before we go, I need to turn on the air conditioning. Alright, with that out of the way, we are good to go, so we are going to release our parking brake and turn on our nose wheel steering. I'm gonna scratch my nose real quick, and then we're going to taxi to Cat 3. So we'll ease on out of our parking spot here, hang a left. And since this is the super carrier module, we have these handy dandy deck crew to help us line up. So we'll line up behind the deflector here and then he should start giving us commands. There we go. So now he wants us just to come straight in. I'm too fast. Stop. All right. Next, we are going to set our wing sweep forward and then begin our takeoff checklist. Sweep set auto, they're coming forward. Takeoff checklist, brakes. Right, kneel the nose down and then respond to just. Okay, keep the pressure up. Fuel. Fuel is speed, auto transfer, dump off, feed tanks, full, bingo set. Keep it down, slide down. Uh, we'll set bingo to 2.2 here, so 2,200 pounds. Once we hit that, if we aren't on final approach to the carrier, I'm going to go looking for the tanker, which will not be fun in the night. Uh, next, I need to turn off my lights. Right down up here. Seat 
So since this is the F-14A Tomcat, we are going to need to put her into afterburner for takeoff. If this was the F-14B, we could take off in full military power. So we're going to go afterburner here, stage one, stage two, there's three, four, both engines are on five. Now we salute the shooter, and I forgot to turn the lights on, whoops. All right, here we go. Good shot. Joker. All right, gear up. Gonna start coming right, get on to the approach, bring the flaps up, and get some trim down. Great, right. yep. Let's contact departure. Departure, Pontiac 3 Airborne. Gear up, flaps up. Now climb straight ahead at 300 knots, crossing 5 nautical miles at 1500 AGL or above. At a distance of 7 nautical miles, start turning right to place yourself in a 10 nautical mile radius circle around the ship. Use tech end to maintain the distance. Being the hotshot fighter jive that you are, you will be expected to follow Navy procedures throughout the campaign. And this is the first and the last time I'll tell you what to do. You can find a copy of the T-45 Carrier Ops Flight Instruction Manual in the documentation folder to refresh your memory. Alright, so now that we're off the boat, we are just flying away and we are now 5 nautical miles from the boat. All I can tell is on my compass there, or here on the right here, uh, the arrow there is the showing the direction of the TACAN. So uh, that's the back, the arrow parts the front, and then these numbers in the middle here that are vertical are the distance. So there are seven nautical miles, so we need to start coming Archer, right. Pontiac 3, arcing. Pontiac Let's slow down to too fast. To the eight, depart on the Alright. Pontiac 3, roger, departing radial 250, climbing to Angels 8. Climb to 8,000 feet, flying along the 10 nautical mile arc around the ship, keeping it at your 3 o'clock position. Just before reaching the 250 radial, meaning when you're at 250 from the ship, turn left 90 degrees, then fly straight heading 250. This time, I will tell you when to initiate your turn. Did that turn a little too hard? We need to ease off a bit here, get back, or get all the way out to the 10 nautical mile DME, and we can start slowing down some. Continuing to climb up to 8,000 feet, we are just now passing 6,000, so 2,000 feet to go. We're going to start leveling off here.
hold about 250 knots of speed as we fly this. Alright, there's 10 nautical miles, so we'll come right, we'll put that arrow on our 3 and 9 o'clock, and we are going to wait until this backhand in reaches about 230 to 240, then we'll start our turn and end up around 250, or on a heading of 250. And now I'm too fast. Go slow down there. He's up on the climb some as I am over 8,000 feet now, so I don't really need to be climbing too much more. Excuse me. Don't need much throttle input right now. Only three and a half thousand pounds of gas. Tomcat is light. Uh, for those who don't know, the Tomcat with two external fuel tanks can carry about two thousand or twenty thousand pounds of gas. So I typical landing fuel load is between. Uh, Slowly start turning left to a heading of two five zero is between about 6,000 and 2,000 pounds of gas. So about right in the middle of that right now. Okay, come left just a tad bit more, and let's tell them we are established outbound. Departure, Pontiac 3 established outbound. Pontiac 3, departure, roger, contact Marshall. Pontiac 3, switching to Marshall. Alright, so we need to go button 17 now for Marshall. There we go. And now we just simply fly this heading. Wait till it lets me contact the marshal. There we go. Marshal Pontiac 3, 250 for 15 Angels 8. Alright, so we got our BRC. This means you need to climb to 9,000 feet and orbit 24 miles from the ship on the 250 radial in a 6 minute left hand race track pattern at max conserved fuel flow, waiting for your turn to land. In the rest of the missions, all you need to do after leaving the carrier's airspace is to ask Jester to select the next waypoint, follow the bug on your VDI, and climb to your assigned altitude. If you do this, the events will unfold as they were meant to. This is a night call, so there are no waypoints. So as I was saying, uh, with the BRC that they gave us, we're going to enter that into our HSD screen here with our core selector, and that'll help us make sure we are lined up correctly on approach, horizontally left to right. You can already see the line there. And that's letting us know we are off to the left some right now, so we have, or that we have to come to the left to get onto alignment. 
All right, we are now in the holding or in the Marshall stack. On the X3, establish Angels Nine. Now, look what the cat dragged in. You guys here to join the party? Elvis, Glory, how's it hanging? You know, big and hairy, hard to carry. According to the original plan, by now I should be in bed with a Greek hottie with a curl of black hair. Yet here we are doing night walls in the middle of nowhere. Couldn't be better. Are you realistic, dude? You would probably be in bed with the latest issue of Playboy magazine and a pack of Kleenex. Oh, shut up, Glory. Captain's orders. By tomorrow morning, the air wing has to be ready for whatever may happen. But we'll even see some Soviet planes up close. Amen to that, brother. Whoops, I got little too much altitude there and we ended up going into the 10,000 altitude stack so we're gonna drop down and it's about time we start our left hand turn anyway since we are six or we're at we just passed 30 nautical miles from the ship and that's our cue to turn left as it's six miles from our initial Marshall stack uh, range distance whatever I want to call it so we're going to come left here and try to end out on 071, as that is the BRC. Alright, there goes the Tomcat that was in front of us. Uh, now, I'm not sure if you will be able to see this in the recording, but, or in the recording, but that green light that is above my little flight path indicator there, that is a light on the back of the carrier. Uh, I'm forgetting the name of it at the moment, but it is there to let us know if we are on the correct lineup to land on the angled deck. So right now when it's showing green like that, that means we are Each mission comes with special kneeboard pages. One with all the crucial information such as waypoints, altitudes, tasks, radio frequencies, tech and weather, and so on. Make sure you read it in order to ensure you complete the mission as planned. You are at the right altitude, tuned to the right radio channel, doing what you're supposed to do. There's another page with a map to help you visualize the flight plan, as well as a few pages of F-14A startup checklist. Detailed instructions are also given in each mission briefing. As I was saying, that light will let us know if we are on the correct lineup for the angle deck. So when it's green like that, that means we are lined up to the right and need to come to the left. When it is red, that means we are lined up to the left and need to adjust to the right. And when it is orange, that means we are on the correct path and to fly directly at the ship. Oh man, look at that. Timed it perfectly. Roger. Just passing 24 miles. So that was our signal is Charlie. So we're going to switch to approach and begin our descent. Establish a 4,000 feet per minute rate of descent at 250 knots. So that's just what we're do gonna do. So we're gonna come over here and look at our speedometer, our altimeter, and our climb indicator. So we are at 250 knots. Uh, 
just a hair above 4,000 feet per minute descent. And we're going through the 7,000 range at the moment. So we will continue like this until we hit the platform, which is uh, 5,000 feet. Continue our approach to the carrier. There's 6,000 feet. When you reach the platform, that is 5,000 feet, reduce your rate of descent 2,000 feet per minute then maintain an altitude of 1,200 feet. Right, there we go. That was the platform. So now we're going to level off just a tad. So now we're descending at 2,000 feet per minute at 250 knots. And we're passing through the 4,000 range at the moment. Fuel state is 3.0. So we are 14 miles from the boat and we're just passing 3,000 feet. So we've got 1,800, right? Yeah, 1,800 feet to go. I can do math. All right, and now we need to start coming right so we are lined up correctly. As you can see, the lights go into a yellowish orange. That means we are on the correct path, but we're just a hair off. So we're gonna come to the right here to get lined up fully. So passing 2,000 feet now. And there is one of the escort destroyers with its helipad lights on. All right, here we are, 10 nautical miles and we're passing 1,400 feet. Start leveling off. You're at 10 miles, time to dirty up. Also, reduce your speed to cross 6 DME at 150 knots. So yeah, we're going to deploy our air brakes first. Give it a little bit of power. Drop the gear. Give it a little more, or add some up trim as we drop the flaps. A more up trim. want to be climbing too much so throw in a little down trim there I'm gonna slow down and deploy our DLC all right Ooh, nose dropped on me there let's give her some power I need to uh, come right for lineup Oh. 99 aircraft, return to your assigned altitudes in the Marshall stack. Funny at 2 is right gate collapsed on landing. Your signal is next to the surf. Well, poo. Pontiac 3, Roger, switching to Marshall. Whoops, whoops, whoops. Not to send here. One will be ascending. Right, I need to come off to the left to get back on the 250 radial.
In most missions, you will be given the option to tune into the radio. You will hear a sound and get a message when it becomes available. This is meant to help pass the time during uneventful parts of the mission and also to help you get that late 80s feeling. To further increase immersion, I created a Spotify playlist with my favorite 80s songs. It will surely put you in the right mood for this campaign. You can access it through the link in the main campaign documentation PDF. Now press the radio button and select the F10 menu to tune into the radio. You can stop it anytime you wish using the same menu. Alright, so as he said, this is going to be a little bit of a downtime here. So I'm going to cut the video here and we'll come back once I am at the Marshall stack. Alright, welcome back. We are just about to reach the Marshall stack and we're up at 9,000, well, just a tad under 9,000 feet. Doing 250 knots. And here we go. We are arriving at the Marshall stack. So I'm going to bring back the throttle a bit and start flying on max conserve. So that is about 200 knots flying between 8 to... It's like 8 to 10 units of AOA. If I'm remembering correctly what is so a little bit of throttle here up trim and now we just fly our six minute racetrack until we get told what's up or at least until we hit 2.2 uh, pounds of gas and then we're gonna go anchor hunting because I'm not landing with less than 2,000 pounds of gas as it is not advised no I'm not looking forward to tanking in the dark because that is never fun that's uh, up trim here All right, there's 30 miles, so we'll come off left here. In our turn. All right, next, uh, if we are going to be doing some night refueling I want to turn down a couple of these lights that were set to nine or that were set to max brightness so that that'll just make it to where when I switch to the NVDs to actually help see the probe and the tanker aircraft that I'm not blinded by my instrument lights So, continue coming around to the left here. Like, uh, th there should be some pop-up messages that uh, we will hear, hopefully. I don't know, a couple times I haven't gotten them to come up, so... If we don't hear them by the time we hit a uh, fuel state of 2.2, then we are going to just ignore them. Go hook up to the tanker, then come back to the uh, to our Marshall stack here, and then use the or and then we'll use the radio or the built-in radio air traffic control system to land on the carrier. So here we are. You can see the flashing light of the carrier out there in the distance. So. I'm going to set it off to the right hand side of my flight path indicator and so we can or that way we can get lined up correctly because we're a bit off of the final BRC at the moment. Ooh, losing speed here so back on some 
Back on some engine power. Okay, yeah, we are about to hit bingo fuel. Alright. I'm calling it here. Time to go tanker hunting. Jester, tune the track in to the tanker. And let me check and see what frequency the tanker is on. Alright, so the tanker is Arco here, so channel 3. So put away the kneeboard, come down here to my radio, and tune to preset channel 3. Alright, we are 14 miles from the tanker jester. Uh, can you find the tanker so I can see which direction he's heading in? Okay. There is the tanker on radar, so he is heading, he's that little, the little U there with the O next to it. There's a line showing off to the right, so it looks like he is flying off to the right. So if we want to intercept, we need to lead in front of him. So, now, no, not there. If I come into my radio menu, Hit F or no, not F5. I want tanker, so F6. Then Marco, we'll one, call the one, tanker up here. Three, one. Yeah, there's my bingo fuel warning. I know. Alright, so that's letting me know he's at 3,000 feet doing 290 knots, which. E. The 290 knots thing isn't fun as I don't have a lot of gas and that's a little bit faster than I'd like to be flying, but oh well, that's what we'll have to do. So we'll we'll start our descent here down to uh, 9,000. Next thing we're going to do is we are going to turn down the lights even more. And then once we get a little, uh, let's turn down the VDI brightness. That's, well, I need HUD brightness down as well. Sorry, it's going to get a little dark in here, but it's for when I throw my night vision goggles on. So I'm 12 miles from him. I think he's kind of going away from me at the moment. Uh, bingo fuel. Yep, yep, I know, Jester. Alright, so let's speed up here so we can catch up, because... Yeah, that stinks. He's flying away from us right now. I'm almost positive of that. Yeah, bugger's flying away from... Ugh, that's not good. Alright, let's speed up. We are at 6,000 feet. And we don't want to be climbing, so. Start coming down. Uh, there, okay, there's a friendly zero eight zero eleven miles, Angels three. Is he turning around here? Please tell me you're turning around. I really want you to turn around. <laughs> That's what it looks like he might be doing. Alright. Yes, he turned around. Ooh, ooh, I leaned over a bit too much there. When I wasn't looking. Alright, so we're going to lead him off to the left here. Yeah, we're really starting to close fast now, so let's come back on the throttle, switch back to the HSD panel there. For altitude, we're at 2,000, so we need to come up some. Switch over to the landing HUD indicator. Four miles from us. 
We're just passing through 400 knots, so we're still going a bit fast. We need to start slowing down closer to 300 knots. There we go, we're at 3,000 feet. Get some down trim. I'm going to start trying to trim out here. Get a little high. So I'm not going to see him until we're basically right freaking on top of him. I want to approach from behind. Okay, so he's out in front of us now. Uh, if you see the little carrot on the outside of the circle there, that's what I'm chasing right now. That is showing me the heading to anchor. My altitude, I'm at 2,000, so uh, he's slightly above me. He's leveled out is what it looks like, so come back off to the right here. We're 0.8 miles from, or er, 0.8 of, basically three quarters of a mile from him, give or take. Come up to 3,000 feet. All right, level off here. Start slowing down because we're about half a mile from him. We're closing fast. A little up trim. I think I see there's light there. Friendly Viking. Um, 12 o'clock. One mile. Yeah. Uh, let's get our fuel probe out. He's turning. All right. Uh, let's overshot him there. Dang it! What the heck did he just do there? Ooh, ooh, ooh. no, 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 no! I'm dipping my nose there. See if I can find him. And then the hood brightness even more. Who is that? His ending here. Let's. Oh, I want it. Turning, I think. He's definitely hard to find at night. Oh, where is this bugger? Alright, I'm low. I'm close. I need to get back up closer to 3,000 feet, and I overshot him. Dang it. Dang it. Dang it. He's off to my right. Let's slow down here. Alright, level off. Should be just in front of me. I'm at 3,000 feet. I'm turning off my mirrors because uh, I thought I was seeing flashes in them. And I am descending again. Ooh, ooh, a little fast on the ascent there. Oh, where is he? This guy is hard to find. I call ready, ready free contact. contact. Will he? Return free contact. Yeah, he's below me to return free contact. Turning.
sky is so damn hard to see. Honestly thinking of seeing if I can just get a radar lock on him so I can spot his butt. But we'll keep doing this the hard way until we get a little bit of time. Ooh, we just flew through his jet wash there. Felt it shake. Or I felt the plane or the Tomcat shake. gotta be right in front of us. Where is he? Oh, there he is. There he is. I see him. His light's right there. Yep, those are his lights. Alright, each throw my... Saying that, and now I lost him. Okay. Turn off the night vision goggles. Dang it, I shouldn't have done that because I lost him when I turned on the night vision goggles. I'm descending big time here, that's not helping. Ooh, and I overshot him. There he is. There we go, found him, got him. All right, let's get set up behind him and call pre-contact. That should be Ready, close enough. We'll try that. If not, okay, we gotta get closer. Little bit closer, and Ready, contact. basket. There we go. We're cleared. All right. All right, let's see if I can do this. Finding him is definitely half of the challenge. <laughs> now the other half, if not more, is actually hooking up in the dark. Ooh, coming in a bit too fast and I'm too, yeah. All right, I got back off. All right, power, power, power. He's off on the throttle. Here we go, little right rudder. Go down some, right rudder, left rudder, left rudder. I'll cut the power too soon there. Oh, no, no, no. Lost it there. Right back up. All right, where's the basket there's the basket sorry if I mumble a little bit I'm working on trying not to mumble I just get focused and then I forget to speak loudly Ooh, shaking a bit too much here oh. nice and steady rampage nice and steady All right, there we go. We're taking fuel.
So I'm gonna lose it here. Fuel 2000. Maintained it there. Real close. Fuel 3000. Ooh, he's going into a turn here. Fuel 4,000. Alright, we'll go to 5,000, or as close as I can get to it. He, I'm shaking big time there, that's bad. Should be good enough. Alright, oh boy. It's loose Queen enough, we got this. So that's hit me at 5 1, yeah, okay, that's plenty of gas. Alright, so let's come off to the left here. Thank you, Mr. Tanker. We will put in our probe and then we can begin climbing again. Alright, let's tell Jester to tune our attack cam back to the Theodore Roger. Roosevelt. And we w can brighten up some of the lights in here. Alright, so we need to come back to the left here. Alright. I will get set back up on the correct BRC. Or, well, here, let me call into the carrier real quick. So y'all can hear what the Marshall, inbound sounds like. Marshall, one, Marky Mom, Street zero three four one four, Angels, 4.5, State 5.0. All right, so All right, so I'm going to get marshaled up. <laughs> Excuse me, and I will let y'all know when I or I will come back once I am there. All right, welcome back, y'all. We are just about to reach our established point. Uh, so the Marshall stack this time, if you were paying attention, is at Angel 7, 22 miles from the ship on the 251 radial. We're on the 251 radial and we're passing uh, 22 miles now. And I'm descending a bit too fast here. So uh, let us press F2 to call established and then we're gonna drop our hook. I uh, realized I forgot to do that the first time around. So landing would have been pointless because we would have had to roll off the end of the deck anyway. Alright, so once we hit uh, 0 to 8, we will come back to the... Uh, we'll turn around and head 071. So aiming to hit 22 miles once uh, we get our signal to land. All right, that's 26 miles from the boat.
Alright, uh, we passed 28 miles, so we're going to come left, come back to a heading of 071. Uh, just double checking, we are in landing mode. Carry hook is on bypass. Do 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 do. -do. Oops. Be descending too much here. All right, there is the boat's flashing light off in distance. We're gonna level off and since it's showing green we're going to set it off to the right hand side of our or of our little center indicator I forget what that thing's in the middle called right now off the top of my head I'd have to look it back up so we will now fly this direction until we hit 22 nautical miles from the boat then we'll call uh, that we are commencing our approach and then we'll fly the same approach we did last time, only this time we're going to be actually landing on the carrier instead of going around. Hopefully. As long as I don't mess this up. Alright, uh, here we go. We're about to hit 22 nautical miles. So we will call that we are commencing. So F3. 201, commencing. State 4.5. Altimeter 29.85. Oh, I need to address my altimeter. Forgot to do that. So switch to approach on button 18. So now like last time we fly a 4,000 feet per minute descent at 250 knots until we hit the platform. And here we go. Platform, so we'll call that in with F3. Platform. So then we will ease up. Next, I'm going to switch over to my automatic carrier or, or my AWL mode. Here. That helps assist with carrier landing. So now you see that second horizontal line. Those are the needles right there. And the goal is to get them to cross right over that center dot there. And that lets me know I am on a good approach. Or on the correct glide slope at the correct uh, horizontal position to land safely. Alright, so hooks down. We are... 15 miles from the boat still off to the right so we're still coming to the left here for lineup we're passing 3,000 feet at the moment I could set this up to do an automatic carrier landing and that's what that AWL will help with but I'm going to do this manual all the way in I'm more comfortable doing it that way I haven't I haven't really gotten the automatic carrier landing to work well for me. I've gotten the uh, 
I've gotten the automatic throttle to engage well before, but I've always struggled getting the actual final sequence or landing sequence to put me down on the deck safely. I've always had trouble getting that to work correctly. So we're just going to do this by hand, the good old fashioned way. So passing 1500 feet at the moment, 12 nautical miles out. Gonna come to the right a bit here. Alright, and let's level off. Past 1200 feet. There are the escort ships. Yay, escort ships. Alright. So we are 10 miles out, dropping our air brakes, our gear, giving it some throttle, dropping the flaps, and enabling our DLC. Now we're going to get some up trim here. We begin to slow down. We climbed up a bit there, we're now up at around 1500 feet, so we want to slowly descend back down to 1200 feet as we get on speed. Now you should see a little E-bracket coming from the top of the HUD there. We want to position our little flight indicator that's in the center of the HUD uh, in the center of that E-bracket, and that'll let us, or that'll help give us our on-speed indication for the HUD. To the left here, you will see some lights, or to the left of the HUD, you'll see some lights start coming on, on and that'll show the on-speed indication there as well. We are now eight miles from the boat, slowing down. Uh, we've passed 1,200 feet. All right, let's get some throttle here. Ooh, ooh, I'm sinking here. Sinking, sinking, get some... Well, I'll get back up to 1,200 feet real quick. Looking good. Six miles from the ship. All right, we're now lined up to the left, so we've got to come off to the right. So we're five miles from the boat. There you go, we are on speed. We're there for a second. Four miles from the boat. Two zero one. Oh, my DLC didn't come out. That's why I was having a hard time getting on speed. I dropped, I dropped altitude there. I need to come back up real quick. I'm off. 
three miles out. There we go, we're on speed. Oh, I just have to intercept the glide path. I lost my own speed there. Power, power, power. There we go. Two zero one, Tomcat ball, four point zero. Roger ball, twenty seven knots, down the angle. You're a little high. Power. Power. I'm not gonna go in. Wave off, wave off. Oops. Not my best landing, but... It's been so long since I've seen a three-wire. Oh, wow, I caught a three-wire there. Okay. Okay, Chester, I'll shut down the jet and the sack. Tomorrow we're going to have an early start. It flaps up. <sighs> when you hear the sound, it means the mission has been successfully completed and it's now safe to quit and move on to the next one. In most missions, this doesn't happen after landing, but before flying back to the carrier. If you quit right away, you don't lose any points, but you may miss out on some fun events. It's up to you, but why not make the most out of something you've already paid for? This concludes the intro mission. If anything is unclear or you get stuck, contact me on the forums or on Facebook. I will try to get back to you as soon as I can. Have fun and good luck. You'll be needing it. I hope you all enjoyed this little introduction mission to the Fear the Bones campaign. I know it wasn't too exciting. We were, excuse me, we were just flying around doing some basic takeoff and landing practice, as well as a little, imp oh, excuse me, got the hiccups, some impromptu night air-to-air -air refueling, but I enjoyed it. Hope you all did as well. I do promise you all we will see more action in the future missions. And they won't all be dark like this, so we will actually be able to see the tanker and not have to fly around looking for it for 20-odd minutes. Or however long that took. It felt like it took forever. Uh, so the reason I'm putting this up is, one, I'd like DCS, and two, I'm going to be busy this week with a lot of schoolwork, so I wasn't going to be able to get a War Thunder video out in the middle of the week, and... I wasn't going to be able, I didn't have enough time to make it before the week started because I'm going to be busy with school. So I thought it'd be a good idea to do this DCS campaign playthrough. I will definitely get back to my War Thunder content. You can expect a video hopefully come next Monday after this, if all goes well with my schoolwork, obviously, because that comes first. But let me know if you want me to continue this playthrough, because I enjoy flying DCS, and I hope to share some of this with y'all. Maybe I can get some of y'all interested in DCS as well. Until next time, I hope y'all have a wonderful day, and as always, thank you.